A set of three computer programs has been prepared to extend themes covered in Scientific Eye. These are available as discs for BBC Model B and BBC Master computers. Please send check or postal order for £30.25. This includes VAT and post and packing, made payable to Yorkshire Television Limited, to Jeff Foster, Yorkshire Television Enterprises, Television Centre, Leeds, LS3, 1JS, or contact your local ITV company. But sometimes there's so much noise that you can't hear a thing. What you need to do is control the noise. And to do that, you have to understand what sound is. The early morning is often very quiet. Even the smallest sounds are clear. But what is sound? Where does it come from? Could you find out where sound comes from? Is it movement that makes sound? What sort of movement? Sound is caused by vibration. In fact, Sound is vibration. Sometimes when there's a lot of noise, you can see the vibration it causes. Look at this window. When scientists want to study sound, they use a loudspeaker and make pure sounds with a signal generator. Then, to see what's going on, they use a strobe light, which appears to slow down the vibrations. Now you can see the speaker cone vibrating slowly back and forth as it makes the sound. The strobe light doesn't change the sound or the vibration, but it does let you see what's going on. 
Under the strobe light, you can study the vibration of violin strings. And you can do the same thing at home using a television screen as a strobe light. When you sing or talk, what vibrates are your vocal cords, seen here looking down into the back of the throat. They go apart for the low notes and come together for the high ones. So sounds are produced by vibration. What do we use to hear them with? The sound makes your eardrum vibrate. The eardrum sends a message to your brain which can sense what's going on in the world outside. To get to your eardrum, the vibration travels through the air. The air in front of the speaker vibrates and passes on the vibration to the soap film. The same thing happens if you put a shiny plastic mirror near the speaker. It's flexible, so the sound will make it vibrate. The reflection's fuzzy because the mirror's vibrating. But what do you think's going on here? some special places you get echoes. The sound seems to bounce back. you need to get an echo what do you think you need to get an echo and how could echoes be useful and how could echoes be useful bats use echoes to find their way in the dark this is called echolocation Radar is like echolocation. Radar is used to locate aircraft and ships. The Navy used sonar to find enemy submarines. And doctors and scientists use ultrasound echoes to study the human body. The instrument sends out a beam of very high frequency sound and measures how it bounces back. The echoes are converted into a picture of the patient's eyeball. Suppose you were blind. If you couldn't see where you were going, could you use echolocation to help you find your way? Some whistles make a squeaky, high-pitched tone, so high it's hard to hear. Especially for older people. What do you think this sort of whistle might be useful for? Dogs are much better than people at hearing high-pitched sounds. But what does high-pitched mean? What is pitch? 
One way to raise the pitch is to play a record too fast. Remember, sounds are caused by vibration. The plastic card is vibrated by the tyre. The faster the vibration, the higher the pitch. Put together some sounds with the right pitches and you begin to recognize them as notes of a tune. So isolated notes make a melody. To make real music, all you need is a rhythm section. So music is just made of sound vibrations. But music is so enjoyable that people have worked out how to write it down. It has a language all of its own. Like all sounds, musical notes are just vibrations. You can even hear the vibrations through your teeth. By the time he composed his Ninth Symphony, Ludwig van Beethoven was quite deaf. How do you think he wrote the music? This girl, too, is profoundly deaf. How do you think she hits the right notes? With a special instrument, you can turn a scientific eye on the shapes of sound vibrations. the difference between a low-pitched note and a high-pitched note. In the high note, the vibrations are closer together. The vibration frequency is higher. And what happens when you lower the volume? Different instruments make different sound shapes. even if they're all playing the same note. Another one. Ah, ah. Children who are deaf have great difficulty learning to talk. How do you think scientists can use sound shapes to help them learn? lovely what happened then. It went up and down and up again. That was a lovely one. Have another try. Sometimes, even when the pitch of sound is absolutely perfect, the volume can be wrong. How do you control the volume of sound? How do you make sounds quieter or louder? 
Early gramophones had a heavy needle to pick up vibrations from the record, and to get the sound out into the room, they used a big, specially shaped horn. The light electronic pickup of a modern record player turns the vibrations into an electrical signal. This can be made as loud as you want by an amplifier. The signal is fed to the speaker, and as you turn up the volume, its vibrations get bigger. When you turn the volume down again, the vibrations get smaller and smaller. What do you think might happen to your ears if the vibrations got too big? think very loud disco music might be damaging to your ears. When people have to work in very noisy places, scientists monitor the level of noise. Long exposure to loud noise can damage your hearing forever, so it's important to check that you aren't getting too much. The loudness of noise is measured in decibels. In this quiet classroom, we measured about 35 decibels. During a normal lesson, about 60 decibels. And when the teacher wasn't there, about 80 decibels. But however noisy or quiet it is, there's one sound that has to be so loud you always hear it. Windows. Too much noise in the environment is called noise pollution. How can we control noise pollution? we'd like to hear are the sounds of nature. But often they're drowned by noise pollution. So, what precautions should you take to avoid damaging your hearing? How many ways can you think of to insulate yourself and your home against too much noise? What else can we do to combat the problems of noise pollution? Mm -hmm. 